Today I'm going to be teaching you how to install MailCow, which is the best self-hosted email solution. This video can be viewed as a standalone tutorial or as part of our Sentmed Mod and Zen 4 tutorial series. The beauty of MailCow is how insanely easy it is to set up. I'm going to teach you the entire process from beginning to end. So let's go over and check out the documentation. Everything you need to know is right here. Very easy to read, very straightforward. First thing you want to see is minimum system resources. So we're going to set up a server with one CPU and three gigabytes of RAM. So we're going to drop in a digital ocean. We're going to create a new droplet. I usually use CentOS, but for this, I'm going to use Ubuntu 18 just to switch things up. We're going to use a standard plan. And I found that this $15 month, fifteen a month plan, three gigabyte RAM, one CPU is plenty. Now, MailCow does have two modules that do consume a lot of RAM. So if you have a really busy server, and you want to be able to use the solar search index or you want to scan all the emails with the clam av then you will want to use uh, something with more ram but i have found for my website that the 15 dollars is just fine we're going to use our previous ssh keys and choose our host name this is important so we're going to do mail.testserver.best and this is important because uh, you're going to want to set up your email server on a separate server from your regular server because I set everything up with Cloudflare for DDoS protection and we can't leak our origin IP address. If you in Cloudflare, when you set up your email server, the email server cannot be proxied by Cloudflare. The reason for this is because all, everything that tests email for spam is going to check the uh, DNS pointer record or the reverse pointer record and that needs to point to the correct thing or else it's going to be assumed that that's spam. So that's our host name. Let's create the droplet. Once we've got that IP, let's go into MOBA and let's add a new session, SSH. Root name is going to be a root for the username. We need to specify our private key right here. And we're going to follow SSH path and we should be good to go. First thing, let's get some updates. While it's running, let's bounce over to Cloudflare and we want to take care of something um, in order for the SSL cert to go through and for all the setup to happen easily. We need to disable uh, always use HTTPS. And this is because we want to have port 80 available so that we can do some authentication as part of the MailCow setup. You want to make sure these firewall uh, port, these ports are open in your firewall. You can run those commands to see a stock installation of Ubuntu will have all those open. So it's not a big deal. The MailCow Docker container as well will take care of those things. Also, here's some default ports for you. Not important to us. Enabling NTP. I haven't had any problem with this, but in, if you do have a problem with it, you can run these commands. Next thing we want to look up is DNS setup. So let's go back to Cloudflare and go to DNS. And we need to add a, an A record for mail. And that's going to point to the IP address of our mail server, which I've already set up here. And we just need to change the IP address. And you'll know this needs to be unproxied or else it is not going to work. And that's why we're, that's the whole reason we're setting up MailCow on another server, because the mail cannot be proxied. If we go back to our instructions here, we also need to set up an auto discover and auto config CNAME record and an MX record. So let's take care of that. And again, we don't want to proxy any of these. X is going to be auto config. We need an MX record. Record art exists. I added it previously when I was setting up this video. So that's what it looks like. Fine. And then we need to add a text record for our SPF sender policy framework. There's three things that you need to set up to make sure that your emails are going to get through and they're not going to be blocked because they look spammy. And those are SPF, DKIM, and DMARC. So the first one is SPF. That's easy. You can do a text record or you can actually use the SPF record here as well. And it's going to be at. And then the record is going to be v equals spf1, the version, and mx all, basically saying that any email server which is listed under an mx record is authorized for our server. Save that. If this doesn't let you add it under spf, just change it to text. And do at, and then we'll drop that in here, and that'll say fine. Let's go back to our server. All those went through, so that's good. Let's go back to our DNS setup instructions. We need to do dkim, spf, and dmark. The instructions are right there for us. Let's go back here, add another text record, and this is going to be uh, underscore DMARC, and we're just going to paste in what we had here. This uh, this record, this is where you're going to email the reports to, and we're just going to leave that as DMARC at testserver.best, and we're actually going to change it later. 
I use DMarcian. It's a service that will help you aggregate those reports and report them. Uh, DMarcian.com. It's actually really cool. So they will give you an email address to put into this field and they will aggregate that information for you and make little reports for you. Very good service. It has lots of um, validations and different tests you can use to help uh, make sure your email server is set up correctly. The next record is going to be another text record. It's going to be TKIM dot underscore domain key. And then what we're going to add here just looks like this. It's just giving the version. We're using an RSA key. And then the email is a selector here. And then this P, that's going to be our key. And if you've noticed, I've already have put one in here, right here. And this is what the key looks like. That's going to be generated for us from the from the mail cow setup. So we're just going to leave that as is now, and we're going to change it later. That's all we need. These are all advanced configurations. We don't need to do it. So now we need to go to installation, and we're just going to grab these commands. It's going to grab the uh, installer and it install and enable it. After Docker is installed, we're going to install Docker Compose. Then we're going to clone the mail cow dockerized repo, and we are going to install it. Right, that's done. Just got to hit the last command there. And then we are going to grab the Docker Compose installation. Then after that, just run uh, umask, and that's going to be 0022. And that just proves that everything's perfect and that we can actually install this. And paste the next set of commands in, clone that repo, move into that folder. Then we're going to generate the config. See how easy this is? MailCow is awesome. So the mail server host name is not your mail domain, but your mail server's host name. So that's mail.testserver.best. And before we go into that, let's go over to DigitalOcean. If you right click, uh, if you go to your server, and then I believe you go to networking, and just scroll down to manage firewalls. And then if you scroll up, you'll see pointer records. And here you will see uh, the pointer record is correct right here. So that's necessary for all of this to work and for your emails to send out correctly. Now we can go back here and hit enter. Time zone is going to be America slash new underscore York. Let me make sure I have that correct. Yep. Do we want to disable solar? So solar is what allows your server. It'll make it really easy for searching through all your emails because solar is what does all the indexing. We're running a small server and I don't really use it for my main email anyways. It's simply for sending out emails and getting at administrative emails, like the contact us form. So I do disable it. That way I don't need to get a more expensive server. Here's some troubleshooting steps, but you really don't need to do anything at that point. You can just pull the uh, Docker image. Those are going to be those. So those are all different uh, containers that are going to be running. You can restart them individually, etc. If you're not familiar with Docker, it just makes everything incredibly easy to manage. Once this is up and running, you don't have to do anything. You just have to run one update script once every couple of months, and that's it. Once that's done, we can compose up. Once that's finished, if you'll notice, your CPU usage will be at 100% for like a minute or two. Just let that go until it goes back down to zero before you access your site. We should be able to go to our server with HTTPS enabled. That's all done automatically for you. It's done with a Let's Encrypt certificate. So if we access it, we should be able to get right in. So this is the admin uh, login. So admin password is Muhu to start. So we'll log in and we're going to immediately change this password. You can generate one right here. I just like to do a little bit longer one. So just copy that, log this and save changes. You can even enable two-factor authentication. So that is the username and password for the admin control panel. We now want to set up some email boxes. So to do that, we'll go to configuration, mail setup, and we're going to add a domain. And the domain's going to be testserver.best. That subdomain mail.testserver.best, that's just a pointer to our email server itself, but we're going to be sending emails from our main server, just testserver.best. You can leave everything basically default. And we're going to add the domain and we're going to restart SoGo. So SoGo, S O G O, that is the webmail module of MailCow. So we're just going to restart that. Now we can uh, click edit on that domain and we can start adding email boxes. So just click uh, configuration mail setup again, and then you can go to mailboxes and we can start adding them. So we're gonna add uh, admin, generate a password, log this. We're gonna create 
some more email boxes because at the end of this I'm going to set you up uh show you how to set this up in Zen 40. So we have admin, we're going we're going to need one for bounced email handling, so that's going to be bounced. We can generate another password, log that in our log. And another one is going to be unsubscribe. So we should now be able to go to our webmail client. So we'll click webmail bin at test server dot best. And remember, this is not the password for the admin control panel. This is the password for our email itself. So we should be able to log in just like that. And then this is what the little webmail client looks like. It's pretty nice. So now let's go back to mail.testserver.best, so the control panel. And we need to go to configuration. And you can see this is, we're going to set up our DKIM key. So to do that, we need to add a domain. And the domain is going to be uh, testserver.best. Selector DKIM is fine. We're going to do a 2048 add and now we're going to get this includes our key right so we're going to grab that go back to cloudflare and we can find our dkim record and we can add that in paste remember this is not for mail.testserver.best this is for your main domain so don't use the subdomain so now let's test an outbound email we're going to send it to admin at guidehacking.com test outgoing send so I did receive that outgoing email and I sent one to this address. And so I just received my incoming. It's all working fine. At this point, we can go back into Cloudflare and we can re-enable our always use HTTPS, but you do not want to block port 80 in your firewall as I believe it needs that. Um, MailCount needs that in order to uh, renew the certificates. Now that that's done, it's all set up. It's going to renew those Let's Encrypt certificates automatically and, and you're, you're ready to go. Your job's done. The next thing you want to do is you want to test out your, to make sure that all of our records are set up correctly with our DNS records. So this website, mail-tester.com, is the absolute best site to do this on. We're going to send an email to this email from our domain, and it's going to check its configuration for us. So we go back here. Let's just create a new email. Fire one off. It doesn't need to say anything, really. We'll just give it 10 seconds, and then we're going to check our score again. And we got an 8.2 out of 10. As long as you get above a 7 or an 8, you're fine. Our message is fine. It's got a check mark. Spam Assassin thinks we can improve. But our DKIM is correct. SPF is good. We're not blocked by any block lists. We're properly authenticated. SPF record is good. DKIM is good. DMARC is good. Everything is good. Your message could improve. I get this on every server I set up. But it's not important. Like I said, as long as you're above a 7 and 8, most of all of your emails are always going to go through. 99.99%. So now I'll, I'll show you how to set all this up in uh, Zen Foro. So we'll go to the admin control panel, uh, email options, and we're going to put in our default email address, contact email address, and our email transport method. We're going to do SMTP, mail.testserver.best, port 465. We're going to the username and password because we're just going to use username and password authentication is right here and we're going to use ssl we're going to set up bounced email address handling and so that was bounced at testserver.best our unsubscribe email address is going to be unsubscribe we're just going to leave this default we're going to enable automated bounced handling and that's going to use top three our server is mail.testserver.best port is 995 we're going to do username and password bounced at test server. Again, SSL. We're going to enable automated unsubscribe handling. Again, pop three. This is going to be test server dot best port 995 again. Same thing, but this is going to be unsubscribe. And that password is up here. Paste that in SSL again. Now, these options you'll have to play with. I actually use one one and zero on my server but you may just want to leave it uh as a default for testing purposes we can click save now and now we want to make sure that that worked correctly so go to tools and go to the test outbound email and we're actually going to send another email to this service we're going to put in here test outbound email send so we did get an error here so let's see what this log says so the reason we're getting this error is because admin test server dot best cannot be cannot send emails with this uh address basically what we're trying to do is we're sending with this address but we're using this as the reply to address so that we can collect uh bounced emails and handle them so to fix that we just go back to the mail cow ui 
go to configuration mail setup and we'll edit uh, bounced and what you want to do is allow to send as and we'll disable sender checks for our entire domain save and do the same thing for admin and now god willing we should be able to send again. Once that's successfully uh, sent, we can refresh our test and it shows we just received the email two minutes ago and there you go. We got a 10 out of 10. So now your server is all set up. It's hooked up with Zen 4 .0. Your emails are all gonna go through. One thing to keep in mind though is that you wanna warm up this new email server because if you start sending out 100,000 emails on your first day, you are likely gonna be start getting blocked because they're gonna assume that you're spam. So warm up doing, I started doing 50 emails per day and then to 100, and now we're at about 500 to 1,000 emails per day. And I, I did that slowly over the course of two months and I've never had a problem since. If you run into any problems with your MailCal server, you can do a con configuration system information and you will see all the logs. So we can go to post fix and we can see those errors that we had are gonna be logged in here. If you're having problems with your SSL certs, you can do the Acme logs and you can see in there. If you go to the mailboxes page, you can click the DNS icon and that will actually check your DNS records for you. We can see that the pointer record is good, our A record is good. These are only if you're going to be setting up an advanced configuration, but our, our MX record is good, our auto discover and auto config are both good. Our SPF record is decent. DMARC and DKIM are also good. The last thing that you will want to do with your server is every couple of months, you'll want to update. So if we go to the documentation, we're just going to run that command from the correct folder. We're in that correct folder right now. So we can just paste that in and update. It'll check for a newer update script. It'll replace it. And if there are any uh, new images for those containers, it will pull them down and set them up. Once it's all done, your server will work fine. It's all automated and you just have to do this once a month or so. So that's it for the MailCow tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. It is a really cool mail server, so try it out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.